Hello, my name is Jeffrey Nicholas. I'm a professor of philosophy at Providence College. This is a lecture on alienation in capitalist society as understood by Karl Marx. We are looking specifically at his book, The 1844 Manuscripts, also known as the Paris Manuscripts. Uh, I understand this text to underlie uh, the mature work as developed in Das Kapital in the three volumes, uh, even though the concept of alienation hardly appears in those volumes. But it's this uh, moral critique that Marx provides in the 1844 manuscripts that helps us to understand the economic critique of capital. To put that in context, we start with this simple uh, quote. The worker becomes all the poorer, the more wealth he produces. The more his production increases in power and range, the worker becomes an ever cheaper commodity, the more commodities he creates. With the increasing value of the world of things, proceeds in direct proportion to the devaluation of the world of men. Labor produces not only commodities, it produces itself and the worker as a commodity, and does so in the proportion in which it produces commodities generally. Now, Marx wrote this in 1844, but as you can see in the chart above, uh, a more recent chart uh, from uh, this decade, uh, from the 1970s on, uh, workers have become more productive, and yet the values of their wages have remained the same. And so here, the worker becomes poorer, even though he produces more wealth. And this goes in line with the idea that the worker is a commodity and yet does not see him or herself as a commodity in this world. Um, so this can be understood as Marx saying that in the modern world under capitalism, everything becomes sellable, even the worker, uh, him and herself. So in the 19th century, what uh, people are concerned with is an increasing rigidity and an emptiness and deadness. Now, our lives are different in many ways from them, uh, from the 19th century, and yet we still have a large manufacturing sector, and we can recognize this rigidity and this emptiness and deadness in that manufacturing sector. We know of people uh, trying to commit suicide in factories that produce our iPhones and other technology. Uh, but we also see that rigidity, emptiness, and deadness in the everyday world of service work, uh, such as waiting at uh, tables at restaurants, and even in the everyday financial world. Uh, so there's an emptiness and deadness there. And what Marx is trying to link to here is this rebellion of the dehumanization of man in the industrial age. How do we become more human? That is the primary goal uh, of his work in uh, the 1844 manuscripts and in Capital. So to put Marx in context, what he is developing here is a historical materialism. Uh, if we look back at Hegel, Hegel is an idealist, and so change happens in consciousness, uh, not in the material realm. Feuerbach tries to correct that, but he still remains an idealist uh, according to Marx. What Marx does is he says that change happens in life uh, through history, driven not by changes in ideas, but by changes in the means of production. That is, how do we produce our basic needs? And under capitalism, we produce that through uh, labor in uh, uh, primarily manufacturing firms and in producing commodities. And so, uh, our idea about what human life is like becomes to re, or comes to reflect that commodity life. Uh, Marx then reinterprets the concept of alienation that Hegel adopts from St. Paul uh, in the letter of Romans and that Feuerbach also adopts. And Marx identifies four types of alienation uh, that we are going to go through here. Uh, so alienation from work, uh, alienation from working, alienation from the self as a producer, and alienation from others. Now, labor we can understand in the modern world, whether we are working in factories or in uh, a business co uh, complex, that labor is alienated. Okay, 
And what we mean here is that the human, in, in a normal natural situation, the human person would express him or herself in his or her work. But in our modern world, we no longer look to work to express ourselves. And so we look to that five o'clock hour. It must be five o'clock somewhere. Or we look to that weekend where we might find some expression of who we are. Um, and so labor becomes drudgery uh, as depicted in, for example, the novel Hard Times. Uh, and there's no direct link between labor and satisfying our uh, direct needs. Now, of course, if we're producing chickens, uh, that might satisfy some of our needs, but it does not produce, satisfy all of our needs. And it's not that we take that chicken home with us uh, and eat it. Rather, we produce that chicken and then we go out into the store and we buy it and bring it home. So there's a disconnect uh, between the drudge, drudgery of, of work in the factory um, and the needs that we have every day. But of course, again, I want to emphasize that where Marx is talking about factory labor, these concepts still apply to the kinds of works that we might do uh, in the 21st century uh, in the United States. Uh, and so uh, labor in a, a business context, in an advertising firm, uh, something that we might not normally think of as uh, a manufacturing system. Uh, and even we can see education itself as being prepared to work in a factory system. Or whether that's in an actual factory or in uh, a business uh, firm. We are also alienated from the things that we produce. Uh, so uh, the worker in a natural situation would produce something with which uh, he or she identifies. Uh, so the worker sees him or herself uh, in the product of the work. A person produces a whole coat or a whole, a whole dress. A person produces a dinner. Right, uh, But in a factory situation or in the modern work context, we do not produce the whole of anything. Rather, we produce pieces and bits of it uh, that uh, we can no longer identify with the thing itself. Uh, and so we become alienated or uh, discordant with uh, the things that we would naturally uh, identify our own uh, self with. We also become alienated from society. So for Marx, human beings are naturally cooperative and they need that cooperation to satisfy their universal needs. This is of course an Aristotelian concept and Marx was heavily influenced by Aristotle, uh, including writing his uh, master's thesis on Aristotle. Uh, and this contrasts with uh, the uh, liberal individualism that both uh, Democrats and Republicans in the United States are the Labour Party, uh, Liberal Democrats, and uh, Conservatives in the United Kingdom share. So uh, that uh, liberal individualism is the individual is an atom in society and only interacts with others when he or she has to. Uh, for Marx, however, we come to our true selves by cooperating with others to satisfy universal needs. What capitalism does is it alienates us from each other because the relationship of explain, exchange replaces relationships of cooperation. And so we're always asking, uh, what am I getting out of this situation rather than what are we together producing in this situation? And so uh, we can think of the like, Christmas uh, gifts exchange and it, it, it's sort of a, uh, an SLNL skit right now where uh, if you give someone a gift, you have to know how much that gift is worth so that or, uh, so that you know if they give you a gift in return that you have an equal relationship. So there's a competition here and this competition takes over the whole world. And Marx understands our lives as uh, rejecting that kind of a uh, very competitive uh, society. Uh, and finally, we are alienated from our species beings, from our natural uh, needs as, our, uh, as what they are. And so we, uh, in a normal situation, we would recognize our needs as arising from the kind of organic persons uh, arising out of nature that we are. But what capitalism does is it uh, uh, satisfies those needs through fake products. So anyone who's ever eaten uh, a McRib sandwich knows that there's nothing uh, that is like a pig in that sandwich that is uh, an actual rib uh, that one would might enjoy. Uh, the bun itself is 
uh, fake green. It's been bleached, uh, and then you're actually eating bleach and sweeteners. Uh, in fact, what you're eating is uh, high fructose corn syrup uh, in this product. Uh, so that what you're you're satisfying yourself with is not something that is natural, but something that is fake. And so that our lives themselves uh, become fake in this kind of uh, manufactured world. Uh, so we are dehumanized in this process as we are alienated from our labor, from each other, and from the products that we produce. What happens then under capitalism is that each person is trying to create some other need in others uh, so that they become dependent on us and uh, they get a new kind of pleasure taking that from us. Uh, the movie Thank You for Smoking is an excellent example of this, uh, how the cigarette industry creates a need in others uh, through lies and other forms of uh, advertising. But we can see this, for example, in cell phone usage, in computers, uh, and in many other things. And part of what happened with uh, the COVID experience is that people began to realize that they did not necessarily need uh, these kinds of dependencies. And so working from home became something where we could kind of break that chain. But we haven't fully broken that chain and we, we are still alienated from the work because we are much more alienated from each other today uh, than we were uh, pre-COVID. And this is because our society is based on an idolatry here. So Alastair McIntyre sees Marx as a Christian heresy, uh, that Marx takes over the language of uh, Christianity and the need to help the uh, or the the drive and the moral need to help those uh, who are in need and instead we replace that with uh, worshiping uh, gold or other objects which are no longer uh, really human and they no longer satisfy human needs uh, for marx instead uh, the true human need is where we are able to manifest our human powers by enriching our lives and enriching ourselves through our activity through our productive activity and our reproductive activity that is a social activity right and so the need of say painting for instance is not just me trying to sell art uh in the uh in the words of, of various artists today but it is me trying to express uh human need through this community that we share So Marx, I think, accurately describes capitalist society. We looked at that chart uh, that shows this uh, worker becoming poorer, even though more wealth is created. Uh, we also see Marx as vying with Christianity in terms of trying to interpret human existence uh, with the concept of alienation, but also with the attempt to try to explain all of human existence through this concept and through its analysis of a social life under, um, uh, under capitalism. What is important, however, is we must remember that uh, what has been called Marxists or communists in real world history has not been influenced by Marx in this way. Uh, the Soviet Union, for instance, or contemporary China, and even Cuba were not Marxist in this way, although we might talk about Che Guevara uh, as a true Marxist, because uh, the USSR and China and, and modern Cuba have continued the alienation that we see with capitalism. And in fact, the USSR and China are simply state-owned capitalism, not, uh, not a Marxist community. And that's important to keep in mind that we are not gonna, that Marx is not looking for the kinds of answers that have been presented in history. He's looking for something new. Uh, I thank you for uh, uh, being with me during this lecture, and I hope that it was uh, beneficial to you, and I would appreciate your comments below.